folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So it is uh, July 24th, 2021, and it's the big day. We're gonna pull honey today. It's uh, about 88 degrees, and I don't know if I'm gonna get all the way through this, but we're gonna try. I uh, tried to get out here earlier, uh, but it just didn't work out. I was uh, playing with my refractometer because this year I'm definitely gonna check the moisture content of my honey. And the reason is it's been super humid and a lot of rain this year and i'm harvesting about two weeks later than normal because i wanted a week of some good weather without rain which we got it uh, so this honey can dry out so there's some uncapped honey always when you harvest and that's the stuff that'll get you so in the past i just did a shake test where i would hold those frames uh, on their side and shake them a couple times real good and if you see even a drop come out, you leave it. Uh, you don't harvest that. But uh, this year, uh, I can still do that. But I'm really leery of having my honey ferment. And I don't want uh, to sell any honey and it wind up fermenting and get a bad name, bad reputation. That's no good. So we can't have that. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few supers on, but a lot of them don't have any honey in them. Uh, so what happened this year... So I'm, I'm happy to be harvesting honey at all. So in, in February, we had a super hard freeze in central Oklahoma. It was record setting and I've never seen anything like it. Uh, it was, gosh, I don't remember now. It was uh, like 10 days below zero and uh, three days it was like minus 16, minus 17. Man, it was brutal cold. We lost a lot of the forage for the bees. Uh, Let's see, Chinese privet, a lot of that's dead. The Vitex, a lot of it de is dead. But uh, some of it's coming back from the root, I've noticed. Uh, I thought I lost my mimosa tree. Where is it? Over here. But uh, it's actually okay. It put back uh, a lot of suckers out of the main trunk part. And it actually, uh, it's not as full of a tree as it normally has been. But it actually put out quite a bit and it's, it's bloomed. So... Yeah, the mimosa tree did survive, uh, but I, man, all those little limbs are suckers, so I don't know how that's going to work in the future. But uh, anyway, today we're going to be using uh, butyric acid, which is honey robber. And uh, I said before, it's kind of a cross between uh, like ripe cherries and vomit. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it smells real strong and sometimes it's not so bad, but uh, you can get a whiff of this and it's pretty, it, it'll, uh, it'll make you take a step back. So it is pretty strong. On a hot day like today, you don't want to overdo it with this because you'll run all the bees out of the hive, not just out of the super. And, and we don't want to do that. And uh, I have done that a few times. So we're going to use this and fume boards. So this is a fume board. It's just a closed uh, off cover that... Uh, has some cloth in here and you just spray the honey rubber or squirt it on here and it soaks into this cloth and then it outgasses so uh it uh that uh and that that works really good i found this works really good and uh it's it's organic and uh it it's not hard on the bees unless you totally gas them and we're not going to do that today so that's about it. I'm going to pull down in there with my little uh, honey wagon and uh, so I don't have to carry them things very far. And uh, I'll just work my way through. And uh, we got hive number 29 over in the woods that's got uh, two on it as well. So, man, that's about all there is to say. I'm uh, going to try and stay cool, take frequent breaks. I don't have my ice vest on because uh, this is going to be a long, drawn-out thing. And it's good for about... Uh, between an hour, hour and a half, and I'm gonna probably be going longer than that. After that, it's just, uh, it doesn't do you much good. We do have a little bit of a breeze, so that'll give me some relief, but down here uh, in these trees, uh, we don't get much much air down here. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna take frequent breaks and try and stay cool and try and get this done all in one day. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the plan. So when we pull off a super, we set it in this uh, gorilla cart here, and I put a wood bottom in it so the bees can't come into the super from the bottom. 
And I have these inner covers here and I've taped off the hole so bees can't get in uh, through there. So I just put that on the top of the, the latest super that I've harvested so it's sealed off from the bees and they can't be uh, doing any robbing. And I'll stack them uh, three or four high and strap them down so they can't fall over. And uh, then we'll haul them up there uh, probably eight at a time. So uh, this hive number one here, uh, that was a laying worker hive earlier on in the season. And that super is on there basically just uh, protecting the comb. I doubt there's any honey in there. Uh, We'll go ahead and take a quick peek at it, but uh, we'll probably just leave it. Yep, it's empty. There's not many bees in here. We need to come back and check this hive. So this is what we're looking for here. You can see the uh, super is full. Appears to be without popping any frames. Uh, we'll pop a couple frames on the outside. So just uh, real quick see what it looks like. But you can see the comb up in the edge. Uh, it looks, it appears to be full. Usually these ones here on the outside is a good test to uh, kind of see how full it actually is. So this is a full frame and none of it is capped. And no honey came out when I did that. So it tells me it's fairly dry, but we'll test that later with our refractometer and check it out and see where it's at. So, uh, and I'm assuming the one below it's full too. So here's how I do this. Just uh, put a little zigzag line on here. Like that. And that will do it. So we'll go on over to our next uh, super we're going to look at while they leave this and then we'll pull these off so here's the next two hives we're going to work on right here so this is a seven and eight uh, looks to be like they're pretty strong hives that brick on there really belongs uh, down on number uh, six down there because six is requeening supposed to be <laughs> So this was a brand new super I put on uh, later in the flow and it looks like they've uh, drawn out three and a half right here. And the one below is completely full. Let's uh, pull one of these frames and see, do the shake test. I might just put this one back down on there and just take the one from the bottom. <clears throat> dripping so we don't want this now let's see I'll just uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try and try and get them both with uh, in one swoop here okay let's see how we're doing this super is empty from bees. Still see a few right in here, so I'll put it on here a couple minutes. Yeah, we should be good to go now. Here I'm fanning. Trying to get that stuff out of there.
so our queen got up in here somehow past the excluder that is not cool queen she didn't get on that one these two frames here have brood in them goofy queen what is the deal she must be skinny so I'm gonna have to leave these in here somehow and let that brood hatch out I've had that happen before queen excluders don't always work 100% of the time Looks like that was the only place. I'm looking on this excluder to see if I can find a space where it's bent. I don't see anything. Well, shoot. What I need is a super that's got some undrawn frames so the queen won't lay on those and put that in there with it. And uh, actually, I think I will put this back on. And we will come across one of those before long. And uh, I'll bring it over here. And those are just going to have to hang tight. All right, because we got to get moving. So, for the people that say around uh, skunk time when uh, I'm putting fences around to keep the skunks off my hives. And they say, well, just raise your hive up uh, and the skunk can't reach it. Uh, this is why I don't raise my hives up. If it's any higher than this, it's just, you know, it's too tall. Plus, I think there's been some additional research on skunks and how high they will go. And that's uh, really false that they won't go up higher to scratch on a beehive entrance uh, someone actually had some video of it so yeah I use uh, electric uh, fence netting to keep the skunks off my hives boy this is a strong hive here it's got three supers on it and this one appears to be full up here Yeah, so I'm going to take this super back over there because we've got some undrawn frames. Uh, and we'll just put that brood right there. And the rest of this she hopefully won't mess with. Okay, well, so we took that top super from uh, Hive 7 there, and it's got uh, four frames that are partially drawn out and worked on. The rest of these frames are undrawn blank. So I took those two brood frames and uh, put them in here uh, on top of the excluder. So uh, hopefully that queen will not come back up here. And uh, so this brood can emerge now. So when you have brood cappings, uh, brood cocoons in your honey supers, that's what attracts wax moths. Uh, if you just have pure wax that just had honey in it, the wax moths uh, don't, don't seem to go for it as much. 
so when it has the has had brood in it that's what the wax moss larva really like to eat up so i may just uh do something with these frames after this brood emerges but uh we'll see so that takes care of that that brood goofy bees all right let's get back over there and finish uh six and seven let's see i need to figure out where i'm gonna put this uh Right there by the camera is some hives that are double deep, so I'm going to take that over there. Oh gosh, we got so many frames uncapped. This is what we want to see here. This is completely full and drawn out thick. Got one single frame up here. And it's dripping. It may be too early for me to do this. Uh, so that's like the second one I've had nectar come out of. We do have a lot of cap though. Okay, we got 10 loaded up. Uh, these are probably, on average, I'd say 80%. Uh, there's some uncapped in there. Uh, three or four of them are just packed full, but uh, it's about what I was expecting. I was hoping to see more capped, but uh, it's not gonna be turn out like that. So I've got a few more on the uh, north end and number 29 that's got two on it over there. Got this strapped down, I'm gonna go unload it and take a break because I am beat, I'm hot. Uh, I might wait till this evening when the uh, shade is over those north highs before I start on those. But uh, let's go get this unloaded and uh, get some water and cool off. So here's a uh, high seven and eight and uh, they were really full. One of them was, had a lot of honey burk home on that excluder. And boy, it really uh, triggered the robbing. And I scraped some off and it, it fell down here on the entrance and I knocked it down on the ground. So uh, there's a bunch of bees cleaning that up. So I'm not worried about uh, robbing to where it's gonna take this hive out. These two hives are super strong, so nothing's gonna bother them. I was more interested in getting that all cleaned up. So obviously. <laughs> flat tire okay there's always going to be some residual bees uh, in your super so uh, I use this uh, battery powered Greenworks leaf blower and uh, it works pretty good it's 40 volts and I just set these on their end and uh, just blow them out
Okay, we got them all in. This is uh, one more load, and I got uh, five more supers out there. So and I had to stop over in the barn and take a break and get out of the sun because, man, it, it was really hot. So here's what we've got. So we've got uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 supers. And these are, there's six or seven that are completely full and the rest of them are anywhere from uh, 50 to 80%. So, uh, man, there's no telling weight wise. Uh, yeah, put in the comments what you think it'll be. Uh, I have no idea. But uh, I wasn't expecting a big uh, harvest this year. Yeah, so like I said uh, earlier on the intro, it uh, the bees had to recover a lot to fill up their top deep before they even started on these supers. So uh, they had a, had a long ways to go before they got started on these. So uh, the next step is I will uh, I'll have to go through here and call out the frames that aren't capped, and I'm going to set them aside. And I'm going to do some testing on them and see what the moisture content is because uh, can't be having uh, over 19% uh, moisture content. So my uh, hydrometer, hygrometer, whatever it's called, uh, the thing that checks the moisture, I won one a long time ago at a beekeeping meeting. And uh, I'd had it there all this time. I thought, you know, it's time I break that thing out and used it. And I got it out and I started messing with it. And I couldn't get it to work, and I couldn't figure it out, and I went and did a little bit of research. Uh, so it's the wrong kind. It's for winemaking. So it's for, uh, let's see, way, way down the, the, uh, the, the scale. So the honey was off the scale for it. So I think it's for measuring uh, relative weight uh, to so you or specific gravity so you can figure out uh the alcohol content of your wine or whatever it is you're making moonshine i don't know but yeah anyway it don't work on honey so uh they do have them on amazon i found one 22 bucks uh i'll put a link below so yeah when you when you look for one make sure you get one that says for honey otherwise yeah it's it's a way off the chart and it wouldn't work so yeah that's the next step get that uh in here and uh, if you want to see a good way to uh, dehydrate your honey, get it get it lowered down. Uh, Duck River Honey uh, is a channel, and uh, he did a really good video yesterday on that. So, well, by the time you see this, it'll probably be a week old. But yeah, check it out where he is uh, extracting his honey, and he actually pulled the moisture down on his. So uh, yeah, I'm going to steal some of his. Uh, methods that he used and uh, try that out because it looked like it was, it, was a, it was a good deal. I already have a humi uh, dehumidifier, so uh, going in this apartment here, I'll, sh I'll show you that real quick. So we were having humidity problems in here. Uh, it was like up around 85% and I got a little remote uh, reader there so I can check it up from the house, just log in and I can check it. But here's my humidifier. I think it's for a 1,500, 2,000 square foot room, and this is uh, this whole apartment is 600 square foot, but uh, uh, that's counting the bathroom and the bedroom, so it's probably 400 square foot in here. So it pulls the moisture down pretty quick, and uh, I got the AC going out here too. It's set on 85, but uh, I'll probably raise that up around 90, and uh, once I bring the honey in here. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to video honey harvest, you know, it's just pulling a bunch of boxes, getting your uh, honey robber on there, whatever you're doing. And, uh, it, you know, as hot as it was, I just, uh, I didn't focus on making the video. Obviously, I focused on getting it done and uh, not having heat stroke. <laughs> so, yeah, I took a big break in between. Uh, I probably stayed up here in this apartment uh, half an hour and maybe longer sat down cooled off I drank probably a quart of water and just rested and uh, got back out there 
I uh, actually did a couple of quick inspections. Uh, you saw that hive one that was really weak. It's failed. Yeah, so there was basically nothing in there. So I tore it down and I put the two uh, hive bodies onto some of the single deep splits that I have that were just about ready for a uh, second deep, but kind of pushing it. But, you know, I want to protect that comb. So I got that done and uh, I checked out another uh, one while I was out there as well uh, that was in the shade. I didn't do any in the sun. But that's the end of the video. Uh, put down below what you think. Uh, I'll do a, a $25 Amazon giveaway to whoever gets the closest weight. And we'll find out that on the extraction side. And that may be a while. But anyway, uh, put your uh, guesses down below. Uh, to win, you got to be subscribed to the channel. So uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. And uh, give me a thumbs up on the video. And we'll catch you on the extraction video. Y'all take care.